Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. Today I want to walk you through one of my favorite ways of fastening furniture together when I'm not going to be gluing it and that is threaded inserts. So the idea behind a threaded insert is that rather than having a permanent form of joinery that sits on this and doesn't allow you to ever remove the piece of furniture, you get basically an insert that will accept some size of bolt that allows you to fasten two together. And in this case, we've got the piece that we're trying to fasten into, and then we've got the piece that's going to be fastened. And this basically gets a countersunk hole in here to fit the bolt that'll go inside of this threaded insert. Now, these are super, super handy when you've got larger pieces of furniture that you're going to want to be able to disassemble later either to fit it through a door or into a house or in this case this is a crib that we're not going to want to have up all the time and we're going to want to be able to store in a closet somewhere. So the first step to doing your threaded insert is to mark where you want your threaded insert to go and decide which side is gonna get the threaded insert. In this case I know this side is going to get my threaded insert and this piece is going to be fastened to it. Now there's two ways that you can do this. One is if everything, if this is the only threaded insert that you're doing, basically just mark everything where you need it to go. So basically split it halfway on this one, split it halfway on that one. You got everything marked and you're good. Uh, I have found that it is more effective for me in certain cases, especially once I get deeper into a project and tolerance starts stacking up, is basically just to dry assemble things together with clamps, get everything aligned where you'd like it to go, and then mark it where you need it. So in this case, because I already have other holes that I'm trying to avoid, rather than I'm um, trying to just measure out where this should go theoretically. I know that I need it to be a certain distance away from this one. So I just go ahead and mark that, mark where I want the hole to be, and then basically transfer it over to this side so that I can make sure that everything's aligned properly. Once you know which side is gonna be getting the threaded insert and you have that position marked where the threaded insert's going to go, check with your threaded insert packages to determine what size you need. In this case, I need a nine millimeter, which I believe is close to like a 5.30 seconds. Um, I need to double check to see what exactly that is, but you're gonna figure out what size you need to drill out in order to fit this threaded insert in, because you wanna get engagement on these threads, but not too much engagement or too little engagement, otherwise you're going to crack your workpiece or the threads aren't even gonna hold. Before you go straight to the final size that you need, especially when you're working with end grain right here, I like to start things off with a quarter inch Forstner bit because it's got a nice point that'll keep it centered right on that spot. It won't wander as I'm trying to drill it in because that becomes a huge issue when you're trying to align the two pieces together. And then once I have this quarter inch Forstner drilled all the way out, then I will move it up to the final size with this guy and get it to the proper sizing. Now for how deep you're gonna go, the minimum depth that you need to go is the depth of the fastener. So in this case, I believe they're one inch that I would need to go, but because my fasteners are a little bit long, I go just a little bit deeper and the fastener will end up going just past that. You don't need to go past it. Um, and in fact, if you've got an area where you can't go past it because say I'm trying to go this direction, you don't wanna go much further than the one inch that's in there. So just make sure that you do the measurements on how much you need to be going into both of your different pieces to size the bolts that you need. And that just requires a little bit of math depending on the project that you're working on. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys drilled out and then I'll show you the next step in a second. Well, you know what they say about measure twice, cut once. Uh, turns out that my Forstner bit that I was using was actually my 3 8 Forstner bit, not my quarter inch Forstner bit, which is what I needed. So I am technically a 16th of an inch too large on this guy, but I should actually still have enough interference on this so that I can mount them. But make sure that when you're doing this, you undersize this hole before you go to ream it out with the final size that you're supposed to have, because this could have been a much bigger issue than it is in this moment. Okay, next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up a little bit of epoxy and just put a small dribble of it on the threads of this while we take the correct size Allen wrench, basically fit it right here into the top. Once you have that epoxy dribbled in, we're going to slowly fasten this into the end of this until this front face is flush with this right here. Now, this shouldn't cause too much resistance in a softwood like this, in a hardwood, what you might find is that you need to basically go in and then back out, in and then back out, in and then back out until you're slowly working your way in, kind of like a two steps forward, one step back type of approach, or three steps forward, one step back type of approach, just like if you're reaming a hole to make sure that these threads don't cause excess damage to the hole as it's coming in, and you can basically ream that hole and thread that hole as you're coming in.
Now, I had to mention this before, but I am using five minute epoxy, so it's got a pretty quick set time. Um, but basically, once you have these guys in set, don't try and load them up until after the epoxy has had plenty of time to cure. So in this case, the minimum of five is five minutes. But what I like to do is keep the mixing container that I had because then I can wait for the rest of the epoxy to cure and see how stiff it is. And in this case, it's still just barely away from being cured enough. While we're waiting for that epoxy to cure, I'm gonna go ahead and put the countersunk holes in this side to be fastened. Now this is going to be a two-step process. First, with the larger bit that you need to fit around the washers, and the second one, the smaller one, which is going to be the through hole that is a slip fit for the bolts that we're using. Now for a quarter inch bolt, I am using a three quarter inch uh, shoulder, and then I'm also going to be using a three eighths inch through hole. Now, the reason why I want to use Forstner bits for this is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this tip on the Forstner bit that keeps it aligned on the center of the hole is going to allow me to align the smaller one when I get to that step. The reason I don't want to do this smaller step first all the way through is that it makes it very difficult to align this well with the hole, which means that I could end up with a through hole and a countersunk or a shoulder that are offset from each other and don't fit the bolt properly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real fast and show you what that looks like. So here's a couple of the other fasteners that I have already done. Once you have the countersunk holes drilled, what you're going to do is just align everything up and fasten everything together like this. Now on the first time through, I like to try and fasten these by hand because if for some reason there's a little bit of epoxy or a little bit of sticking or cross threading, um, you can check to make sure that there's not too much resistance. And in this case, there wasn't. So you can just fasten it all together. Um, but if there is a little bit of resistance, you don't just power through it with the driver. Um, the other thing to note is that if you do loosen this up a little bit, there is a little bit of give that you have in here. Basically, as much give as you had on that through hole that goes all the way through here, that is how much you give you're gonna have with the joint. So if you wanna make sure that everything's aligned nicely, basically just get everything aligned where you want it and then go ahead and tighten everything down and that should get you right where you need to go. Well guys, that's threaded inserts. They really are that simple, just that quick kind of two-step process. Throw it in, throw a little bit of epoxy on there and you're good to go. Um, as a note, I do generally tend to use quarter 20 bolts on pretty much everything that I'm fastening together. I've used it on a bed frame. I'm using it on this crib now. So even pretty hefty, large pieces of furniture, I do use them on. I will note though that I don't generally just let the uh, threaded insert or the bolt be the primary support of vertical shear. Not that the bolts aren't strong enough to handle this. I just don't generally like to let these things sit and shear. So the other thing that I will include with these joints usually, which I didn't show here, is either a domino or a dowel or some other piece of wood that can help to take that vertical load on this. This is just really good for really cinching everything together and keeping everything nice and tight. And as I said, on my bed frame, I've used these, they've been on there for a year. I tightened them up once after about a week of just the bed kind of settling into place. Um, and then after that, it hasn't needed anything and it is still rock solid. There's none of that weird like bed wiggle wobble that ends up happening where things just creak. So anyways, love these threaded inserts. Um, I will leave a link to everything down in the description below. If there's anything that I missed, please ask that question down in the comment section down below. Um, and I'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for joining me. If you like the kind of videos we're producing here at Northwest Craftsman, we'd really appreciate a thumbs up on the video and a subscription to the channel. The community is growing and I love to see more of you guys around. So thank you for getting involved and thank you for being here and asking really good questions. So anyways, happy woodworking. Hope you find a chance to use these threaded inserts. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.